Welcome to episode 9 of the WOWS podcast. Featuring Jimbo and Fisher. It's, uh, it's very good. Episode 9 of the podcast. I like to call it the Waste of Web Space podcast and not just the WOWS podcast. There might be some Waste of Web Space purists out there who like to know, who like to listen to the Waste of Web Space and aren't World of Warcraft fans. It's getting worrying that we're getting, um, we've actually nearly done as many episodes as we've got fans. Yes. <laughs> One each. That, that is how dedicated we are. You get an episode each for our fans. And some of you can now get two, I think, probably. But uh, but there we go, we're the number nine, uh, so we're only 990 episodes away from episode 999. Oh, yeah, that one. It's a special one, that one we're going to do, isn't it? Yeah, we've got Michael Burke presenting it. Fantastic. And uh, I'm not sure if you heard, did you hear recently that uh, there was an application to make a German version of the programme 999? Yeah, I'm not sure why it never happened, though. Well, it was suggested, but apparently it got a no, no, no. Oh, right. From the, uh, from the commissioning board over in Germany. Uh, that's that's one interesting fact about number nine. Another thing is that in Greek mythology... Yeah, I've heard about this, yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, it takes an anvil nine days to, to fall from the sky to the earth. What a strange thing to have for mythology, though, like anvils. What, what, I don't know. I don't, I, don't really, random. I don't really know what the purpose of an anvil is, to be honest. Um, and nine days takes a long time to get to earth. Mm. Um, although perhaps if one of the great scientists of uh, ancient Greek times was there, it would also make the point that a feather would take nine days mm. to fall from the uh, from the sky to the earth. You'd think that uh, you know the bloke who invent who, who, who discovered gravity. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'd have thought that, that that falling anvils would have sort of that that's what would have clicked in his head about gravity rather than an apple falling yeah. from a tree. Perhaps perhaps it was, but the problem was the anvil landed on his head. Yeah. And then sort of caught him a bit of a problem. Mm. And an apple landing on your head isn't going to hurt as much as an anvil falling on your head, especially if it's taken nine days to get there. I suppose not. And nine days is a long time for something to be delivered to the ground. And was Royal Mail doing it or what? Well, yeah. <laughs> but uh, and, and perhaps it actually was a Royal Mail anvil. Perhaps the Royal Mail anvil was sold really, really cheaply, and then its value increased a lot. And then uh, it turned out the anvil was actually quite good. Yeah. A valuable piece of equipment. And cats have got nine lives as well. That's something to do with the number nine. Yes. Uh, could be quite useful if there's anvils falling out of the sky all the time, I suppose. Exactly. They'd have to get hit by nine, nine anvils. Nine anvils, yeah. yeah, to then eventually die. So I suppose if an anvil only falls out of the sky one at a time, and it has to reach the floor before another one can fall out. And hit the same cat. And hit the same cat, yeah. It'd be, it'd be, it'd be unlucky, very unlucky. <laughs> it'd take 81 days for the cat to uh, unfortunately... Pass away, but hopefully we hope that no cats do get hit by anvils, and uh, certainly no cats have been harmed in the making of this podcast. Well, you, you don't know what's later on in the show, though, yet, do you? Well, yes, we've not got to the special part. But, we'll have to uh, say that at the end as well. Yes, yes, we'll, we'll let people know whether any cats were harmed. There are two cats in the house at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Yes, so... Um, but yeah, cats have, uh, we've talked about the cats, but strikers, football strikers in particular, being football fans that we are, we like the number nine because... It's one of the most popular positions on the football pitch, isn't it? The number nine. Your club's number nine. The striker. The one who scores the goals. Yes, the popular strikers include people like Alan Shearer. Goal scorers like Gary Lineker and Andy, Andy. Carroll. Yes, and uh, strikers like Arthur Scargill. And Chris Brown, he's a striker as well. He is. I mean, he'll strike anything at times, you get the feeling. But as, as well as strikers, who else can we talk about in terms of football than Alan Hansen? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, he's uh, he's he's announced that he's going to be leaving Match of the Day after a lot of years. Yeah, on the show. So someone asked him and questioned him quite vociferously as to whether or not he was doing the right thing in terms of packing in terms of Match of the Day. But no, his defence was quite good, wasn't it? It was. Yeah, I was very impressed. Um, a lot of people say that Alan Hansen, of course, isn't a very good pundit, but you've got to look relatively at things, haven't you? Yeah. And he sat next to Mark Lawrenson for years. At which point you think actually, yeah, he was quite a good pundit. Yeah, he was. But uh, I'm not sure what he's going to be doing. Have you heard what he's going to be doing now? Yeah, I have. He's, he's forming a Hanson tribute band with his two brothers. Oh, right, OK. What are they going to be called? Uh, Hanson. So, happy birthday to you. Cause it was your birthday the other week, wasn't it? <laughs> a well, whole month ago, because we are recording this podcast very late. Yes, uh, although when we actually planned the podcast and things on this material, uh, things on this podcast were topical, it had just been your birthday. It had, yeah. It's nearly my next birthday now, which is how long it's took us to record it, I suppose. Yes, but we'll, we'll not labour that point, will we? We'll not labour that really old point. I mean, I got a caterpillar cake. Did you? Yeah, I've not had a birthday cake for a few years now, being, you know into my mid-twenties, it seems a bit childish having a birthday cake. Well, go birthday cake. Caterpillar is in the animal, or uh, sort of a, a JCB type thing? No, definitely the animal. Yeah. Um, I mean, I had quite a big chunk of it, 
and they were nice enough to leave me um, leave me the, the caterpillar's head, yeah. you know, the face with the eyes on it and everything that made out of icing. Um, but I couldn't eat it. I didn't want to overface myself. <laughs> uh, um, I, the, the caterpillar cake was it? Uh, was it good or did it sort of turn into a butterfly halfway through eating it? Is well, that, is that what the, cat, the caterpillars turn to butterflies? They do, yeah. They do. Thank God for that. Um, he could have made a butterfly bun out of it, I suppose, if he'd have you know, chopped into it and then done the uh, you know, that top bit and made it into wings. But um, I suppose it is, is, point, uh, is worth pointing out that uh, no caterpillars were harmed in the making of this podcast either. Well, we haven't finished it's, the podcast yet. You still don't know what's okay. going to happen. Yes, we still don't know what's going to happen. We might be having fights between caterpillars cats and, cats, and cats, cats Yeah, later on. Or just dropping anvils on them. Yes. See, how, see if they do actually last nine so, times. But that would take a nine nine days for us to do that podcast, at least. Or 81 days. 81 days, days so. yeah. Uh, but yeah, if if uh, I'm, I've turned 26, so basically, if I'd have been given um, both a red and a black playing card every single birthday of my life... Then you'd have 52 playing cards. Exactly. Which may not necessarily constitute a pack of playing cards, depending on whether or not you were given sort of them in order. Yeah, and I wouldn't have got the Jokers, of course. Yes. Oh, by the way, Nick Clegg and David Cameron, I saw them on news talking about Jokers. Oh, right. Yeah, um, don't really say much. No, Never mind. I could have organised for them to come round to give you the Jokers, I suppose. I mean, I'd also now be in the over-25 section on X Factor, which is terrible, because I've been, I've been Sharon Osbourne's group. That is, oh, what's that? That, that is that is terrible, really, isn't it? Although I suppose we could we could mitigate that by entering as a duo in the group. Yeah, yeah. I think I'd rather be one of Sharon Osbourne's dogs than in that category. Yeah, well, I suppose you possibly treat them like a dog. Who knows? Um, but it's popular again this year. The X Factor, it's on again. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people have trailed out for it. Um, the England football team tried to go in there and uh, and appear on the X Factor, but they were knocked out in the groups. Oh well, that's what we expect, I suppose. Yeah. Although, did you hear that the kit man did quite well, the team kit man? Yeah, but he got he got kicked out of boot camp, didn't he? He did, yeah. It was uh, it was very disappointing. And uh, the team's barrister, he got involved. Uh, is he the one who just got knocked out at the judges' houses stage? He did, he did, unfortunately. And uh, Although, I did hear that John Terry, apparently, uh, he got through to live shows. Oh, yeah, but he, and he got knocked out, didn't he? But he did, did. did you see him singing the winner's song as well last year? Yeah, I did, yeah. 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 And, uh, and then this year, and then uh, he's going to do it next year as well. Yeah. As well as appearing at the Champions League and FA Cup finals. Yeah. And various kits. Yeah, he christened um, the Royal Baby the other day, if you saw that as well. Did, did he, was he yeah. involved in that as well? Yeah, you, you name it. He's, uh, he's, uh, when, when Prince Charles gets coronated, he's going to be there as well. And, uh, all but you, you went to London, though, didn't you? I did go to London, um, just just for a few days, um, on a training course. It was good. I was amazed. I went on the, went on the tube, which is a bit, uh, a bit unusual. Um and there's, saw, a lot there's, of, a, there's a lot of tourists, isn't there, in London? Yeah, and a lot of foreign workers as well. And uh, one, one of them came up to me and said, uh, she said, YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. And I thought she'd seen me on some of the videos and stuff that we'd done, but it turned out she was asking if I was going on the tube. Oh. Um, but, you know, never mind. You, you've got to go somewhere. And, um, yeah, hopefully we will get recognised a bit more because I was in St Pancras Station. And uh, I said, I need to get the train. And she said, uh, one woman behind the counter said, you're a star. I said, well, yeah, we've done the Wow's podcast, eight episodes. I don't and, think she uh, meant that either, did she? I think uh, I think you've been getting confused there. How do you mean? I think you, 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 you're thinking that you're famous, and I think she was just talking about the train, the Euro star. She oh. wasn't saying you're a star. Oh, right. oh, well, fair enough. Well, she's gone down in my estimations, then. But, uh, she could be one of our nine listeners. She could be, yeah. In which case, this episode is dedicated to you. Um, but I saw the Tower of London when I was there. It's uh, Peter Crouch, as he's more commonly known. Um, he was walking around, and uh, I went on that. Uh, I saw all the sites, all the sites. I've went, I've been on the to London myself actually, and I went on. You know the big the big wheel. Yeah, the big wheel. Yeah, that's it. I went on that, but I was. I mean, I saw all the landmarks on it because obviously it takes you up quite high. Hmm. I saw all the landmarks, but I was a bit annoyed because I never actually got to see London Eye. I couldn't. I couldn't spot it. Could you not? No. Oh, 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 fair enough. Um, but that big Ferris wheel is great, isn't it? Um, did you get a bird's eye view of things? I, I can't say I saw any frozen fish fingers, but. You know, they might have been there. So, speaking of London, though, uh, Buckingham Palace was in the news, wasn't it? So, yeah, there was secu- security alert, weren't there? Yeah, there was someone in the grounds who um, who shouldn't have been there. Uh, they didn't want him there. He wasn't meant to be around, and um, no one really knew who he was. It was, uh, it was Prince Andrew, apparently. Oh, right, was he dressed as Batman? I uh, don't think so. I don't think he was a father for justice protester. Oh, right. He was, just, um, he, he was just, just there, by the sounds of it, and uh, a policeman came up to him and asked what was happening. 
Um, Prince Charles uh, turned up as well, didn't he? He said he was all ears. Yes, that was very nice of him. And uh, I suppose they thought that uh, there was a possibility that a crazed lunatic might be in the grounds of Buckingham Palace, but uh, the Duke of Edinburgh wasn't around at all. So. All right, and then it's Prince Harry, of course, being Prince Harry, turned up in his Nazi uniform, and they asked, uh, they asked what had happened, and... He said, have you called 999? Yeah, uh, he said, no, 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 in the German accent. You've used that again? Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's a good joke, and just try, try and get it in where you can. So in terms of sport news, uh, Stephen Lee has been given a ban from playing snooker for 12 years. Yeah, that's a long time, isn't it? Yeah, it's a big break, isn't it? It will be a big break. <laughs> yeah. Um, but apparently he was very disappointed to be given a 12-year ban for match fixing because apparently he'd better than it been 14 and a half years oh right well I mean at, at least when he gets at least when we get to our 12th episode he'll have an episode for every year every of year. his of his ban yes which will be very good for him no doubt that'll be the light at the end of the tunnel for him yeah but uh, apparently he was offered a load of money and by the sounds of it he pocketed the cash oh which uh, was the, which then actually meant he thought he'd lost it, but uh, fortunately the umpire was on hand, or sorry, referee was on hand to then pick the money out of the pocket and put it back on the table for him. <laughs> I think that's our cue to move on, to be honest, Fisher. Yeah, I think uh, I think we should give it a rest, really, shouldn't we? Can you pass me a cushion, Fish? Yeah, yeah, I think we. Uh, I think in terms of these snooker jokes, we just need to pull our jokes together, really, don't we? Well, I want I want more sm- snooker jokes, to be honest. I like them. Uh, well, I've blackballed you. All oh, right. Well. I, I mean, I was just going to tell a joke about uh, a man who rubbed. Um, snooker choke on his penis but it's a bit blue well I suppose that's just the uh, the tip of things really isn't it it is and then the final joke of course I was going to tell you is about a snooker player who was so desperate to the toilet that he just crouched on the table and just did a poo right there on the snooker table really that's disgusting well he was touching cloth So, for the next part of our podcast, we've come to the pub, and there's a perfectly good reason for that, other than we just uh, want to do the podcast in a pub and have a drink. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Danny Dyer will be the new landlord of the Queen Vic. Um, oh, that's, that's good. Is it? Well, what have been in previously? Well, I, I think he'd just been working down at the uh, at that factory making leather spheres. Oh, the football factory. Yeah. Yeah, apparently uh, he quite liked that, but he was a bit rough in it when he was um, when he was working there. Sometime. Yeah, I mean, he's always said he doesn't want to be typecast in that hard nut cockney role, so... Yeah, so he's landlord of Queen Vic, apparently, so... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank God that's, uh, that's working for him. Um, he said, actually, he'd been offered to do it before, but he turned it down, um, so I'm not sure... I'm not sure why he changed his mind. I mean, he's probably money dried up, really, didn't it? Yeah, no more, no more work, work for him. So he decided that he would now do it. He would now. Um, he, he's always wanted to do it. He said. So we're here in this pub doing a, a manly thing and having a drink together. Yeah, I mean, I enjoy going to the pub. But although I went to my local pub the other week and uh, there were some people playing darts. I mean, I absolutely hated it. So I did a quick one eighty and walked back out. Well, yeah. Um, but you know, there's various people in here. I mean, um, just, we, we'll just describe some of the people we can see. I think that's probably right, isn't it, Jimbo? Well, who's that bloke over there having uh, looks like some whiskey on the rocks? Um, that's the captain of the Costa Concordia. All right, and, and there's a there's a bloke over there. I, I could swear down he's just walked in with a pint in his hand, already full, um, and a camera crew following him around. That that's. That's Nigel Farage. He's, uh, oh yes, he's, yeah, he, he came in with his own pint, didn't is he? Is that the man who's, who's pint super glued to his hand? Yeah, oh. it's, and it's always filled up. He's, he's having a pint in the Queen Vic, our yeah. Queen Vic, a British Queen Vic, from back in the days when Britain was for Britain, and people <laughs> from Britain. We uh, were an independent state who just happened to invade other countries and stuff, but and what, it was British. And what about that lady over there? I think it's Carol McGriffin. Oh, yeah, she comes in every day to, um, because, well, she comes in because she can get a free drink if it's her birthday. I think she's about 3,932 now, isn't she? Apparently so, yeah. Yeah. But, um, hey, Jimbo, uh, man walks into a bar and he's got a massive chin. Oh, it's Bruce Forsyth. It's Bruce it? Forsyth, yeah. Has he come for his birthday as well? Yeah, he's 3,932. All oh, right. And there's a band over there. Uh, oh, he's uh, UB40. Yeah, what bother are you drinking? Red, red wine, obviously. Yeah. What else would they drink? I've just heard Katie Price walking in. Oh, she's she's just coming in and all asked for some nuts. Yeah, she always wants nuts. Yeah, she's obsessed with them. It's, uh, Frankie Cocosa's over there. Did you see him when he came in? Oh yeah, he asked for some Pepsi, didn't he? Yeah, we didn't. Uh, we didn't have any though. Didn't have any. Uh, all they got was Coke. Oh, I suppose we were quite happy with that then. Yeah, he had about four or five lines. And who's that fat bloke at the bar? Um, 
That's Pavarotti, I think. He came in and asked if they did two meals for a tenner. Do they? Yeah. Yeah. He ate, uh, well, he ordered four, basically. All right. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's as I say, sing about, isn't it? It is, yeah. I mean, uh, talking about singing earlier on, uh, someone came in and wanted to use the jukebox. Oh, yeah, it was Miley Cyrus, wasn't it? But she was complaining because the jukebox didn't work. Yeah. I mean, did you watch Miley Cyrus at the at the VMA Awards doing a dancing? Um, yeah, it was disgusting. Yeah, it was filthy. disgraceful. Horrible. Ridiculous. I plus it. Yeah, it was brilliant, wasn't it? Yeah. It's, um, and uh, there's a pool. Oh, hang on. What's that man doing on the pool table over? Is he taking his trousers off? Oh, he's touching cloth. Oh. So, in politics, the US government is on shutdown mode, or was on shutdown mode. Uh, their government apparently was uh, you know, ineffective and not doing anything else. So, um, well, we're used to that, aren't we? So, yeah, yeah, get, get used to it. <laughs> yeah, like the UK's government, hard lines, America. Yeah, yeah right. I mean, a lot of the uh, the, their gov- the US government departments went on shutdown, basically, didn't they? Apart from, though, the IT department, who just went on standby. Yes, yes, that's correct. Or um, hibernate. Yes, the hedgehogs, unfortunately, had to hibernate. Um, but, uh, as I say, it's a bit unusual. I mean, I suppose, if you're in the UK and your government went on shutdown, um, I suppose you're expected to work for free, as opposed to American oh, you of course just go you would, home. Yeah. yeah. But never mind. Um, and also, it was party conference season with uh, Labour, Lib Dems and the Tories all having party conferences. Uh, one thing in particular was the Tories wanted everyone under the age of 25 to have a job. Under your, uh, Well, which is obviously a bit unfair on people who are in school. But Yeah, so what does that mean for people over 25? Can we just not bother? Um, I think they have to go on the X Factor in Sharon Osbourne's category. Or just do podcasts. Uh, do podcasts, yeah. Um, which is not our actual job, but it's just a hobby that mm. we do. Yes. And for those over 25, you might have got a caterpillar cake. Yes. Which happens on every birthday of those 25, isn't that right, Jimbo? I, I, well, I'm finding out that so far, yeah. Yes. Um, but yeah, I, I know, because uh, there's some jobs, basically, that English people won't do, to some degree. I mean, a friend of mine used to work in a sandwich factory, it was just him and loads of Polish people. All right, yeah. So, I, it wasn't permanent there, it was uh, it was just a filler. Oh, right, yeah, of course, just uh, putting putting bread on the table, I suppose, weren't they? Yeah. I mean, earning on his crust, obviously, though. Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, it was something where he was just effectively spreading his bets. Oh, crumbs. These these bread jokes are starting to get terrible now. Yeah, I mean, uh, to be fair, though, he did actually meet his future wife there. Oh, yeah, is that, that the one who he butted up while he was working there? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he um, he took her out on a date initially and uh, he bought some flowers. All oh, right, yeah. Yeah, plain and self raising. <laughs> I knew someone else who also met a girl in a bread factory um, the workforce, though, was incredibly diverse, and he met this woman and, uh, and he bought some bread. All oh, right, white brown. And now it's time for the extra bit of our podcast, I suppose. The bits that we didn't slot in anywhere else. They're going near in at the start. Yeah, the rubbish, basically. The extra time bit of it. On that news, I suppose, uh, apparently Sir Alex Ferguson has actually released an autobiography. As he now? Yeah, 100 pages long, but uh, if the ending doesn't look like it's going to be any good, it can like extend to about 105 pages, which is good. <laughs> um, but uh, one thing that did actually catch our eye was the story to the Titanic. Yeah, uh, the violin that was apparently from the Titanic and the violin that was played as the ship was going down to calm the passengers has been sold at auction for 900k. Now, I'm not sure. I mean, is it the real one? or I mean, I think it just could be a fiddle. It could well be. It could well be just a fiddle. Um, but uh, that's one story. So uh, Robbie Williams as well has been in the news. Yeah, his his fashion label, which only started a couple of months ago, I believe, uh, has actually gone bust. Apparently, the problem started with the button-up shirts. Uh, they just keep, you know, they just come undone. Well, it's it's a it's a common problem um, for Robbie Williams' shirts. Clearly, he often appears sort of without a shirt buttoned up on. Some of his album covers, I yeah. think, so perhaps that's always been a problem. You should have thought about that before you got a shirt supposed to be fair. Um, one thing I saw was that a man in Neaton, I believe, was drinking a can of Foster's and found 50 flies in the bottom. I'm not entirely sure of that, because it appears to be a very accurate number, a very rounded figure, I suppose. Uh, so um, I don't think there actually was 50 flies in the bottom of it. But uh, Perhaps it's like a minibus. You're only supposed to safely have so many people on a minibus. Perhaps that's what the flies were doing. There's only only 50 of us can fit in here safely. Yeah, yeah, no more, no more. But uh, apparently the drink was disgusting and horrible, and uh, there are no 50 flies in it as well. Yeah. 
But, uh, yeah, that's annoying. For the, I feel a bit sorry for the flies, to be honest, getting stuck in there. I mean, imagine one day they were just hanging around a, a, a bottle, you know, a beer factory, mm. and uh, then next thing the, the lid shut on them, they're stuck in a bottle of beer, but they were pissed. Yeah, it's like Foster's. I mean, imagine if they had to drink that. I mean, they'd suffered enough as it was. But uh, also one of the things that caught our eye was uh, a man who was arrested for throwing a parrot at the police. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the man was apparently arrested for intimidating a police officer, and then the parrot was arrested for um, imitating a police officer. Yeah. I think a policeman came up to the parrot and said, uh, anything you may say will be used as evidence when appearing in court. Uh, to which the parrot said, anything you may say will be given as evidence when appearing in court. Um, and uh, one other thing, I, well, one other animal story that I saw was a dog who is described by uh, a newspaper as being the luckiest dog in Britain. And uh, he's a lucky dog because he got two broken legs and spent two weeks without having anything to eat and police are trying to track down his owners. And that's a lucky dog. A lucky dog, yeah. Lucky <laughs> to have owners like that who look after him so well. And then police are going to try and track him back down and give him the dog back. I mean, iPads have been in the news, haven't they? They have. Um, the new iPad mini that is being released is the thinnest iPad ever. Because, you know, the amount of times I get an iPad and think, ah, oh, too thick. Too thick for me. It's, it's not good news. I mean, for, for young iPads um, watching this, it's not, it's not good for their body image, is it, really? You've been told to be fat. stick thin like these iPads. Oh, well, yeah, or for the old ones, to be told that they're, they're fat, they're yeah. too, too fat. But the amount of times I'm walking around and think, I'll tell you what, I, I've got a space that is 0.5 centimetres big to slot my iPad in, and this iPad is 0.7 centimetres thick. I am sorry. You are a letdown iPad. You disappoint me all the time. And uh, one other story that kind of uh, caught our eye finally was um, a woman who was holidaying in the Caribbean was wearing a bikini and apparently she walks into a glass door and um, and this sued the holiday company, apparently. Uh, quite a tragic accident uh, because obviously she was, she was wearing a bikini so it cut herself quite badly. Uh, what then happened was a man walked into the... Uh, glass door because he was too busy looking at the woman who was wearing the bikini. <laughs> it's, um, that's that's one of those tragic chain of events. I mean, this is this is the problem though, isn't it? Things like this are going to be putting up our um, the cost of our holidays. The cost really. of our holidays, and uh, apparently something else, and the, I know it's particularly the insurance, but something else that apparently has has caused this in terms of travel insurance is is the amount of accidents people are having with lilos. And travelling uh, travel insurance companies are blaming the problems with lilos on the rise in premiums, but you know it could just be inflation. It could well be. It could be uh, just inflation. Um, one thing that I saw as well, uh, injury on holiday was uh, well, I, I did actually. Um, I was hit by a parasol. All right, yeah. yeah. Did you get any insurance money back? Uh, not a shade. Oh. Not a shade. Uh, but apparently it wasn't the insurance company's fault. Uh, or the insurance company I was actually dealing with wasn't the main company, it was just a n- part of an umbrella company. Well, I mean, the similar situation I got myself into, I was uh, once injured on a diving board. Did you get a payout at all? No, no. Uh, the insurance company won't give me anything. I bet you were fuming. Oh, completely flipped. So it's time to wrap up the WOWS podcast episode 9. Yep, we'll be back uh, at some point. I'm not, exactly, I'm not sure when. We'll try and plan one, then we'll try and record it. And but it will take... be episode 10, which happens to follow episode 9. Yeah, generally speaking. Um, number 10, of course, another football-related number. So we'll probably use a lot of the same striker jokes. Yeah, at the start of the programme, so skip the first. Recycling. Minute. Yes. Saving it's, the environment. It's good for the environment, yes. Um, so feel free to continue to log on to the website if you do that at the moment, which I don't think people actually do. Feel free to follow our Twitter account, which, again, I don't think many people do. And feel free to listen to the podcast, which you're already doing, so um, well done. Thanks. If you just do the other two, then you'll be a top listener. Yes, you'll be one of our biggest fans. Wasteofwebspace.co.uk and our Twitter account, at Wasteofwebspace. Yes, just in case you're going to forget those. Um, But in terms of the website, actually, we will soon next year be doing the World Cup song. That's right. Exciting things coming up. Uh, Every couple of years I do record an England song. And uh, this time Fish is asked to be on it. Yes, uh, it's getting quite popular, so I thought I'd just jump in there. Although I'm not not 100% sure about having Fisher on it, though, because I do doubt his nationality and whether he's actually completely English. Uh, I've got to ask Jack Wiltshire first his opinions on it before I let him take part in the England song. Yeah, I mean, I did ask Jim about it. He said, uh, look, Fisher, this is an England song. And England songs are in tune, mm-hmm. they're funny, and we play hard when it and comes to... And they must be able to have a lifespan of at least a week. Yeah, to last the full length of England's involvement in the tournament. That's right. So thank you very much for listening, and uh, we'll see you... Oh, we'll, well, we'll we see you, well, we won't see you, but hopefully we'll interact with you again via the next podcast. So thank you very much from both of us. Bye. See ya. Oh, Jim, I need to take a dump.
Where's your snooker table? Ah, it's just through there. 